What's up guys? Welcome back to Lavender. This is my July favorites video and this is actually my second time filming this video today because I accidentally deleted the last one. Yeah. Anyway, so July was a month of really rediscovering inspiration and emotion for me. You guys might have seen my last video, Do What Makes You Come Alive. I feel like I've spent a lot of time this month just to do things that make me happy, just to do things for fun and just take a time to kind of breathe a little more and so it's been a good month for me i feel like i've found a lot of new things that inspire me and i'm so excited to share them with you today in my favorites so first favorite of the month is actually a person rupee Kaur. i have no idea how to pronounce her name but she is a poet and an artist and you have to follow her instagram i feel like this is my favorite Instagram of the month. Literally, she writes such beautiful poetry. She talks about like such pain. Like she makes you feel. She goes places where most people are afraid to go and she's not afraid to use her voice to be bold and just tell it like it is. She's very empowering as a woman and I just love, love, love her work. So check out her Instagram. She has poetry and then she usually puts like a doodle art next to her poetry to go with it and I just really like that experience. It's something fresh and something very soft yet powerful and I've never quite found something like it. So I bought her book, Milk and Honey, and I've been reading through that. Um, yeah, I just love it. I love her. I think it's so beautiful. My next favorite is the Tony Robbins I Am Not Your Guru documentary on Netflix. If you guys have Netflix, you have to watch it. Honestly, it's so good. It made me feel human again. And what I mean by that is like, it just made me feel so many emotions. I was crying throughout all of it and I felt like I just got so much from it. So if you guys don't know who Tony Robbins is, he's a famous motivational speaker. He's like one of the best of the best. He's you know been around for a really long time, for decades. And this documentary is not like a documentary about him. It's more about taking you through the experience of going to one of his events. So he holds this huge, annual week-long event called date with destiny and this documentary takes you through each day what happens each day the kind of people that are there how he does interventions and then you see like these people who have gone through these traumatic experiences it's like so heartbreaking and then you see how they transform and they go from being suicidal to being like I don't know, like having hope in life and then you see the supportive community. It's so beautiful. It's, I think it will give you something. It will definitely give you a lot of something after you watch it. It, it might be different for everyone, but for me, it made me feel human. It gave me emotions. And also, you guys know I'm a personal growth junkie. Like I'm always taking notes when I'm reading things or watching or reading things like this. So I had my notebook with so I had my notebook with me and I was just taking notes throughout this whole documentary and if he had some like activities that he was doing with his audience in the event, I would like try to do the activities with them and I have a lot of fun doing that kind of thing. So yeah, I loved it so much. Definitely, definitely recommend it. My next favorite is this comic called Helios Femina and if you guys know Michelle Phan and you're a big fan of her, you know about this because she created it. So for those of you who don't know, Michelle Phan is this like huge beauty YouTuber guru businesswoman person but she's also an artist and she created this comic and it's so beautiful. I, I read it all in one night, all the chapters that are out so far and I stayed up till like 5 a.m. just like going through all the chapters because one, the art is so pretty and the makeup on the characters are like on point because it's Michelle and I just really like the story. I, I feel like I haven't read something like this in a long time and I just like this digital web comic experience so you know how like people used to read manga it's like you know a comic book paper and i don't know it, it, that's like the old school way and like i'm just so wowed by this new school way of reading comics because you're on your ipad and you scroll vertically it's very seamless and sometimes there's like music to the chapters and the art is just on another level i really enjoy it so i'm having a lot of fun reading that it's so entertaining and 
I don't know, if you guys like that sort of thing, definitely check it out. For me, it's also fun to read like the comments that people say after each chapter because people are just so funny. So there's like a hot guy and we're like shipping him and the main character and it's just really, really fun. Another favorite of mine from this month is something called Serial Magazine. So Serial Magazine is a travel and style magazine that just has gorgeous, gorgeous photos. I learned about this from my photographer friend, Karen, Karen Rosalie. I, we did like a special project earlier this month that I don't want to talk about, but you guys can check her out on Karen Rosalie underscore on Instagram. She's an amazing photographer. Anyway, she introduced me to Serial and Serial's photos are just so beautiful. You guys know I love that dreamy, pastel, soft white look and their photos are very minimal, they're very clean, very very well done and it's just inspired me a lot. I look at it and I'm like wow, I want to create visual work that looks like that. I want to be able to do that. How can I learn to be better in videos and photos? So right now I'm just trying to step up my visual aesthetic game and stuff like Serial Magazine is really helping me. My next favorites are my only products of the month and they're the L'Oreal Pure Clay Masks. And these were sent to me courtesy of L'Oreal. They were super awesome, sent me a big box of skincare. The only thing is like I know myself, I don't use masks very often. Like if I buy a mask, I'll use it like once every three months or something just because I don't remember to use them. So I knew that I had them and my cousins, aunts and uncles were coming over to swim. So I was like, you know what? Let's just have a face mask party. And so it was really fun just like having everyone do face masks. It was like a spa day at my house. And then I had my cousin from France come over. He brought his French girlfriend to America for the first time. And it was just fun watching them like put face masks on each other. And for me, like that's why this was a favorite because it brought me this moment of pure joy and fun and yes, the masks do work really well. I think I used both the red algae exfoliating one and then the green one and yeah, everyone was like, oh my god, my skin feels so good. Thank you, Eileen. <laughs> and it was just so fun because a lot of those cousins, like all the guys were doing it too and they've never done anything like that before. So it was a great experience. Just really, really fun. A favorite moment of this month. Thanks to L'Oreal's face masks. Moving on to my favorites in music for the month. So uh, this is like my favorite thing of today. I know today is not technically July, but I just have to share it. So today I found a video online. Someone posted Porter Robinson's full set at Hard Summer Festival. And oh my goodness, if you guys know, know me, like. I'm a huge, huge fan of Porter Robinson because not only is he so creative with his music, he has such a unique voice, but also he just like, he creates this full immersive experience with his art. Yes, it's art. So like visually, he has this like storyline, he has a visual like palette and it's, you know, it's very colorful, it's animated, Japanese inspired, and it just takes you to this new place. Like you're literally in another world. And I just love it so much. Like I got goosebumps, I was listening to it all day. It just makes me so happy. So if you guys even listen to like the first 10 minutes of that set, it's so good. It's so fun. My favorite part is like around the nine to 10 minute mark where it's like this, girl character talking about how she's like she felt like she was in a dream and the lines are blurred and she just she talks about like oh I did I just wake up how long was I gone and then she's like and reality will never be the same and then it just like goes boom into divinity one of his songs that's my favorite song on his album worlds and I love what he's done to music He's really created this audio visual experience and he takes you on a journey and that's what I think good art does. It just, yeah. 
Aside from that, my other song that I've been playing over and over and over again is actually a Chinese song. So I don't know if it's very relevant or relatable, but it's by this artist named Coco Lee. And the song's English title, I think, is Longing to See You. And in Chinese, the title is Ni. So it's just like a really cute poppy love song. And I like it because it's just like a Chinese Mandy Moore, Christina Aguilera, 90s poppy girly song. And I love that. So I found out about the song because I heard someone else sing it at karaoke. Karaoke is where I find out most Chinese songs. So I don't know, I've just been listening to more Chinese songs lately just because I have more fun learning lyrics to Chinese songs or just to other languages. So when I'm sitting in traffic, I'll like look up lyrics and listen to songs over and over and over again just to learn it. And I learn things phonetically because I'm not super fluent in Chinese. It's funny how like I could sing a whole Chinese song, but I don't understand what the song is saying. I just know how to say the words and sing it. And to me, that's really fun. I don't know if you guys remember, like I had this whole phase where I was learning Italian songs like Time to Say Goodbye and A Più Ti Penso. I just have fun because if I know how to kind of speak this language basically, it's fun to learn a song in that language. And to me, it really helps challenge my brain enough so that I'm not bored while I'm driving. Next up, the book that I've been reading this past month or actually listening to is called You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. So I just signed up for Audible this past month and this is the first book that I'm listening to. And I would say that it's a book for people who are just getting into personal development, self-help. Because for me, I think I didn't really enjoy the first few chapters because she spoke to the audience as if like, oh, like if you don't like your life right now, you, you can do this to change it. And if, basically I felt like I wasn't her demographic because I think these kind of books target people who are not in a good place and who are completely like on the other side and they're trying to transform their life to being like happier and positive and whatever and I feel like I am at a place where I really enjoy my life I love what I'm doing and so I'm kind of further down the road so that's why the middle towards the end of the book I liked that more than the beginning but I feel like this book is a really good reminder of all the different areas you have to work on in terms of like growing yourself and living a life that you want. So for me, it's a really good refresher of all these different topics. So like I said, I just joined Audible and this is my first book that I'm listening to. So if you guys have any recommendations for any good audiobooks, definitely let me know in the comments below. Also, if you guys are not on Audible yet and you're looking to start getting into audiobooks, I do have a link where you can get a 30-day free trial and a free audiobook. So the link is audibletrial.com slash lavendaire and you guys go on that link and sign up for your free trial. You can cancel anytime. It's really easy to cancel. So just try it out. And lastly, I feel like this goes without saying, but one of my favorite things of this past month is Pokemon Go. And I feel like I've been playing it for so long, but really it just started in July. And I don't know, I just have so much fun with it. I don't care if some people don't like it, they think it's nerdy, like I love it. And I just wish I could play more <laughs> because I don't know, all my cousins play and they're all leveling up really fast. And I feel like when I'm at home during the weekdays, like, I have to work and there's no Pokemon by my house so it's like I can't level up. I can only play on the weekends when I go out so yeah. Anyway, this past month I did have some like Pokemon Go dates where we went to like parks to catch certain Pokemon and we went to Santa Monica Pier, literally walked around for three hours non-stop catching Pokemon. It's like it's a Pokemon fest in Santa Monica Pier right now. It's crazy and it's a lot of fun. And I mean, I've loved Pokemon my entire life. I grew up with it. I used to record it on VHS from the TV and I played all the games, you know, from the Game Boys to all the N64 games like Pokemon Stadium, Pokemon Puzzle, Pokemon Snap, all those like random games. Like me and my brother were all on it. We collected the cards. And even on my car right now, I have this little Squirtle bobblehead and I got that in elementary school and I told myself like when I get a car I'm gonna put this on my dashboard on my car and so when I got a car I put it there and now like 10 years later it's still there and I'm playing Pokemon again so 
it's just fun. I love it and it brings me joy. All right, that's it for my favorites. Now I just want to share some quick updates. So Picture Taipei, that film that I shot in Taiwan last year, is finally done. I know I, I told you guys I would let you know when it's done. So it's done and we're having a screening in LA on August 13th. So I don't know if you guys are in the area. If you want to come, you can RSVP by emailing picturetaipei at gmail.com. And I'll be there, we'll watch the film. It's like a 20 minute short film. And then we're gonna do a Q&A with the crew after. So I'm definitely nervous about it, but there's nothing I can do at this point. The film is done and it is what it is. It's not my baby. I'm just gonna let it go. I just have to let it go and move forward. Also, another cool thing is if you guys are in the minimalism community online, I'm sure you've heard of The Minimalists. There are these two guys that blog about minimalism. They created this film documentary called Minimalism the Film. And yeah, it's about minimalism. And your girl is in it. I really haven't seen it yet. I'm gonna watch it tonight, I have the link, but I just know that I make a cameo in it. I think my video plays like for a little bit, but yeah, I'm in it, check it out, watch it. I think you guys will, I don't know if you'll, you'll like it. I have to watch it first and then I'll let you know what I think about it later. Thanks so much for watching today. Let me know which favorite you liked by commenting below. Give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys on Instagram and Snapchat at Lavendaire. Until the next video, bye.